first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you who are here. I'm honored to be here. I'm very thankful. When I was first asked, uh, I said yes immediately because I was told I'll be addressing a bunch of teachers and I have enormous respect for teachers, teaching as a profession. Whatever I am today is because of the teachers that I have had over the course of years, especially while I was growing up. So thank you for having me here. I'm very glad to be here. First of all, uh, and thank you, Daria. You know, she is the one who invited me over. I don't remember the last time I talked to this many smart people all at once. Yes, I'm speaking from New York, but I want you to know that I grew up in Nepal, which is another landlocked country just like Kazakhstan. I also want to say, I envy that all of you can speak Russian, but I cannot. When I was at high school in Kathmandu, I read Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace and Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, but I did so in English. Many people, uh, they talk respectfully of farmers. Some people say farming is the top profession there is and I might have to agree because I grew up in a farming family. We basically grew everything we ate. No such luxury anymore. These days, my cauliflower is at least, at least one month old every time. And I have no idea where they get it from. Farmers are precious, yes, but I think teachers, like you are a close second. When I accepted the offer to speak, I said, education is a great cause, let's do it. So I commend your curiosity. Today, less than 15%, one five, 15, less than 15% of Americans have used chat GPT. That you are eager to make use of it in your work says volumes about you. You are on the cutting edges and I congratulate you. The caricature about chat GPT is that it is a tool that helps you cheat on the essay exam. But the truth is finally, finally we have a tool for education that speaks to this knowledge economy we live in today. Now, thanks to tools like chat GPT, education can be extremely personalized. Teachers can be much more productive. Students in Kazakhstan can together hope to attain the same levels of education as students in New York City. It is a hugely democratizing force. Chat GPT is good news for teachers and chat GPT is good news for students. Before we go into the details, know that this talk will be put online on YouTube and in the description section of the video, you will have all links to all the reference materials. So don't worry about taking notes while I talk. You will have everything in video format and in writing afterwards that you can look at as many times as you want. This talk will last about an hour and then there will be a half an hour long question and answer session. I might not be able to answer all your questions, but I will try my best. And I will definitely make note of all the questions. For me personally, that question answer session is going to be my favorite part of this entire webinar. The reason I was invited to speak is because I happen to have an online course called Chat GPT Literacy at parmendra.mykajabi.com. 
next slide please number 2 so let's begin there are six parts to this talk each roughly 10 minutes long the first part was the introduction and that is over now in this second section i want to briefly touch on the technology behind chat gpt chat gpt is not a person you are a person i am a person chat gpt is a machine like a car is a machine a coffee maker is a machine chat gpt is a machine that has managed to read a big chunk of the internet google before that did manage to index a huge chunk of the internet but what makes chat gpt different is it can also generate text but it does not generate sentences like you and i do we are human beings chat gpt is a machine to chat gpt it is statistics what is the most likely next word and it does not reach peak performance at 100% what is best for that machine is 90% 90 so assume that at least 10% of the time one out of 10 times chat gpt is going to get it all wrong but this is not a person who lies this is a machine that is making a statistical guess so when you make a guess and you are wrong one out of 10 times i would say that is excellent because why you are right nine times out of 10 roughly speaking you will hear people say things like it is so confident even when it is lying well it's a machine if had if, if it has power it will produce and by power i mean electricity a very famous early example is when somebody asked it to write an essay about human civilization at the time of dinosaurs and it did the essay was dramatically immaculate but you and i know there were no human beings at the time of dinosaurs you have to know enough about a subject that when chat gpt gets it wrong you can tell you have to know or you have to be willing to learn chat gpt is basically a curiosity engine you might be an expert in a subject but it can help you find gaps in your knowledge it can help you find the gaps and it can help you fill those gaps i think the top use case for chat gpt is that it is a great teacher is that good news for teachers you bet this is a technology to embrace not a technology to get anxious about i think the best prompts are simple one sentence questions and commands for example one of my favorite prompts is tell me a joke and it tells me a joke and when it does i say tell me another you can keep asking for jokes as many times as you want or you could save time and say tell me 100 jokes and it will say you are a teacher and you have been reading about chat gpt and people around you have been talking about it and you are wondering how can i as a teacher use chat gpt if that is where you are at right now today that curiosity on your part itself is a wonderful prompt what is that prompt try this 
100 ways chat GPT can help a teacher. That's it, that's the prompt. That is an actual prompt I created and used and generated this list that is a blog post of mine called 100 ways chat GPT can help a teacher. And that link will be shared with you right now in the chat section. Each item on that list of 100 can then be subsequently turned into a question that you can then again ask chat GPT. For example, the first item on the list is that chat GPT can help by providing resources for lesson planning and curriculum development. Now, turn that into a question, which would be this. How can chat GPT provide resources for lesson planning and curriculum development? And that question is your new prompt. Insert it into chat GPT and see what you get. One prompt generated 100 new prompts. You'll be amazed that chat GPT can do so much for you. And with that, I would like to enter the third section, uh, third slide, please. Thank you. In this third section, I would like to emphasize that you as teachers encourage your students to use chat GPT. A student could ask the same question that you did. How can chat GPT help me as a student? And the prompt could be something like this. 100 ways chat GPT can help a student. Well, I did use that and I generated the response and that response is a blog post, which will also be shared with you in the chat section right now. So each item on that list of 100 can be turned into a question to ask the chat GPT itself. For example, the second item on that list is that chat GPT can offer study tips and strategies. So the prompt based on that is a question, which is as follows. How can chat GPT offer study tips and strategies? And the student is on her way. Chat GPT does not mean the teachers are now no longer needed. What chat GPT means is the teacher has now cloned herself. So instead of one teacher for 20 students or 30 students or however many students you have in your class, maybe 50, right? So before chat GPT, it was one teacher and say 50 students. Now with chat GPT, you have 50 students and 50 versions of the same teacher, one-on-one. -on -one. The one-on-one -on -one attention that you just couldn't give before, now you can, thanks to chat GPT. So chat GPT is your friend. Chat GPT is the teacher's new best friend. So what chat GPT means is the teacher has now cloned herself and is now available one-on-one -on -one for each of her students. Chat GPT can give individualized feedback to a student's essays at every draft, right? When you write an essay, you take it through a few different drafts, four drafts, five drafts, and that feedback that you just didn't have time for, now Chat GPT can. You as a teacher 
as an individual might not have time to do that. But ChatGPT can do that for each of its students, for every draft of their essays. Teach them how to do that. That is not cheating. That is getting a lot of individualized attention from a teacher who is now available all the time for each student individually. So I would urge you, teach them how to use chat GPT to get feedback on their essays as they write them. Sometimes what I will do, I will use it for essay writing myself. Sometimes what I will do is I will think of a topic I want to write about. Then I will write down the key points that I wish to include in that essay. Then I will feed those points to chat GPT and ask it to generate an essay based on those points. What I get, I call it my first draft. And then it is back to work. Bye-bye writer's block. I'm not stuck anymore. No more just staring at the screen. And here's a real story. This happened. I had a short novel that I had written with me that I had fleshed out years before Chat GPT came along. I used Chat GPT to re rewrite it and flesh it out a little more. And it is still a work in progress. As teachers, I encourage you to encourage your students to use Chat GPT as much as possible. The word I use is integrate. Integrate it into your life and work. Early in the talk, I said less than 15% of Americans have used Chat GPT. If I had to take a guess, I would say less than 1% have bothered to integrate it into their life and work. Most people just play with it, have fun with it, and they're done with it. No, integrating it into your life and work is different than playing with it. You play with it, you amuse yourself, but integration means using it reflexively in many things you used to do without it before. For example, replying to emails. Chat GPT is a great tool for that. Chat GPT can be an amazing tool for your students to polish up their resumes and write cover letters when they start applying for jobs. Next slide, please. Thank you. In this fourth section, I would like to talk about specific prompts. If there is one thing Daria emphasized more than once when she invited me for this talk, it is that I should talk about specific prompts teacher can use. Well, it is easy. You can do what I can do. The prompt I created was this. 100 top prompts for teachers. That's it, 100 top prompts for teachers. And I fed that to chat GPT and it gave me 55 prompts and then abruptly stopped. So what did I do? I entered a new prompt, two words, keep going. Then it gave me more. Once I had the list of 100 prompts, I said, say those 100 prompts in Russian. And he did. Well, it stopped after about 23. And I had to say, keep going. I had to say two times. And I, a non-Russian speaker, had my list of 
100 prompts for teachers in Russian. Well, I'm depending on you to verify if those prompts in Russian are any good. All those 100 prompts in both English and Russian I have published in the form of a blog post. It will be in the description section of the video of this talk that Daria has said she will post online. 100 top prompts for teachers in English and Russian. And I could share that right now in your chat section. Okay, I'm, I'm in the chat section, I'm sharing right now. Yeah, oh, Hannah already did that, thank you. I'm just repeating her work. Thank you, Hannah. So, as you can see, you know, like, you can generate what I just did. Like I said, I do have an online course, but my blog is free. The course people pay for, but my blog is for free. And I have a newsletter that is also free. You can sign up with your email address and every week you will get chat GPT tips from me. And I hope many of you will sign up for the newsletter. These first four sections are enough to get you started. You will be on your, on your way. Right, just to revise, what's the first prompt I used? I said, 100 ways chat GPT can help a teacher. That's it, that's the prompt, right? And, and then it gives me the list of 100. And then I go, I go through that list and then pick the items that are of particular interest to me. And I turn them into questions and I ask those questions to chat GPT, right? That's one. The second is for a student saying, 100 ways chat GPT can help a student. And it gives me that list of, of 100. This third prompt was 100 top prompts for teachers in Russian. And it gave me those 100 prompts in Russian, right? Easy, simple prompts. You are basically asking questions, right? So no matter where you are at, Chat GPT not only answers your question, it helps you learn how to use Chat GPT itself. You just have to ask. But let's say this has been basic, right? These first four sections, they have been basic by design. I would say profound, but basic. Some of my favorite prompts, are only a sentence long. Some are even just a word. For example, one word prompt, summarize. Say you have a thousand word essay, right? An essay that is 1000 words. And the prompt is summarize, and then colon, right? Two dots, colon, and below that summarize prompt, you copy and paste your essay, thousand word long essay and chat GPT will summarize that essay for you. Or the opposite of that, expand. For example, you have an idea, right? One sentence idea. You want to expand that into an essay. So you ask chat GPT, this is my idea, expand this into an essay, and it will do that, right? Expand one word. Or you can be more specific, right? You have, you have something you want to say within one sentence long, but now you want to turn that into a thousand word long essay. So you say, say this in 1000 words and you insert your one sentence and chat GPT will turn that one sentence into a thousand word long essay, right? So you insert one sentence or at most one paragraph or maybe five bullet points and you have the first draft of an essay. And I use that all the time, like pretty much on a daily basis. And now, uh, 
Fifth slide, please. Number five. Thank you. There are other topics to cover. For example, paragraph length prompts, right? That's one. So a prompt that is not one sentence or one question, but it's an entire paragraph. Sometimes you need that. Or follow-up prompts. Follow-up prompts meaning you enter a prompt, then chat GPT says something, you say something in the response, then chat GPT responds to that, and then you respond to that on and on. As in basically it's a conversation where, you know, you said something 10 times, Chat GPT responded 10 times. It was back and forth, back and forth. Those are called follow up prompts. Some of the best work I have done with Chat GPT is when I used follow up prompts. Let's take an example. Say you are the principal of a high school or college and you want to run a campaign to get your students to start using chat GPT as much as possible. How would you design that campaign? More important, how would you ask chat GPT to help you design that campaign? Two options, you could ask me or you could ask chat GPT. If you ask me, I would say ask chat GPT. So how would you approach chat GPT to get the best possible response? For this particular purpose, a paragraph length prompt would be great. Here, one sentence might not work. So how do you compose that paragraph? Step one, you assign a role. You assign a role to chat GPT. You say, wear this hat. Say you are the principal of a selective college of 1,000 very smart students in Kazakhstan seeking to get your student body as well as the faculty to integrate the use of chat GPT into their education, right? You are assigning that role to chat GPT, saying you are the principal. You have these many students and this is what you're trying to do. That, that's who you are, right? So that's a role that you assign to chat GPT. Once I asked chat GPT to become William Shakespeare and he did, you know, said, you're William Shakespeare, write a sonnet on the spring blossom and it did, right? So step one, you assign a role saying you are a principal of this college. Step two, now you describe the task at hand. What's the task? The task is design, and not how specific this is, right? Design a three month long campaign for the college that will get the students and the teachers of this institution to use chat GPT fully into all they do. That's the task. Right? You are asking it to design a campaign. That's the task. Now, step number three, describe the output. Like when chat GPT answers, do you want that answer to be an essay? What do you want? Or do you want bullet points? How many words do you want the answer to be? Do you want it to be 100 words, 500 words, maybe a thousand words? How many? Right? So you want to be specific. Step number four, do you want to be able to measure the progress at the end of the three month long campaign, right? So it generates a campaign, you do it, you execute it, and then at the end of three months, do you want ways to measure as to how successful it was or not? You ask. Now, having talked about these four steps, let's bring all that together and let's create the paragraph length prompt. And this is 
what you would enter into chat GPT, right? That's the start. This is the prompt. You are the principal of a selective college of 1,000 very smart students in Kazakhstan seeking to get your student body as well as the faculty to integrate the use of chat GPT into their education. Design a three month long campaign for the college that will get the students and the teachers of this institution to use chat GPT fully into all they do. Use all possible online and offline options. Generate the action plan in the form of bullet points that are spread out over a three month period. Let the output be 1500 words. Also, suggest ways the campaign's success can be measured at the end. And that is the end of the prompt. That whole paragraph was the prompt. So do you see like earlier we were talking about one word prompts or one sentence prompts or one question prompts, but now we are tackling something a little more ambitious, which is a prompt that is a full paragraph. So you enter this prompt and you get a response. You read it, you like some parts, you don't like some parts. What do you do? You give feedback saying, I like these parts you share, but the other parts are weak. Can you redo that? And it will redo that for you. You go back and forth a few times and you will have a great campaign that you can then execute. And when you interact with chat GPT like that, where you are like responding to what chat GPT is saying, that's an example of a follow-up prompt. As in, not only are you asking the first question, after chat GPT says something, you are asking a follow-up question and another follow-up question. It is supposed to be like a conversation. You know, you are talking, you are part of conversation. A conversation doesn't stop after the first thing you say, right? You say your part and the other party says what they have to say, and then it's your turn, you speak. So when you go back and forth, back and forth, say about 10 times, you will have the best possible result. That has been my experience. So that was an example of a paragraph length prompt, right? To emphasize what are follow-up prompts. When you start using follow-up prompts, you know, you have arrived, you have become a chat GPT expert. You know, your comfort level has grown. You know, that's how you measure, you know, that's how I would measure, you know, how many of you have reached a point where now you are using follow-up prompts regularly. Once you start using follow-up prompts, you have arrived, you have become an expert user of chat GPT. As in, you enter one prompt, you get an output, then you provide feedback on that output and ask for modifications, saying, hey, change this part, this I don't like. You go into conversation mode. By the time the task was completed, you had to enter 10 prompts, one after the other. I think, this is my personal opinion, that chat GPT does some of its best work when you subject it to follow-up prompts. You know, you'll hear people saying things like, you know, they put in a prompt and they get an answer which they don't like. They're like, oh, this, this is an overhyped technology. It's no good. It doesn't write good essays. It doesn't, you know, so it doesn't give good answers as opposed to, you know, using follow-up prompts to polish the answer. Sometimes I will start by saying, generate 10 blog post ideas on such and such topic, right? And it does. It gives me the 10 blog post ideas. Then my next 10 prompts will be asked to turn each of those ideas into blog posts. And now that's 11 prompts and 10 blog posts that now I can use for marketing. I, I do that all the time. For my marketing, 
I used a lot of blog posts that were generated through chat GPT. Uh, next and final slide, please. Thank you. This is the sixth and final section. This also is the shortest section because I'm going to be very frank about saying that I'm in a hurry to go to my favorite part of the webinar, which is going to be the question and answer session. So this final section, the shortest of the six sections, is going to be a summary section. I'm going to briefly summarize all that I've said so far. In the first section, I was introduced and I introduced myself and I thank you for attending this webinar. Education is a good cause and teachers, you guys are very special people. I still stay in touch with my high school teachers. On Facebook Messenger, I'm messaging them all the time, a few times a week. I greatly appreciate my high school teachers to this day, actively. Teachers are very special people. By the very virtue of attending this webinar, you are telling me and the world and your students and your communities that you are on the cutting edges of what education has to offer today anywhere, in any country, in any, at any school, in any classroom. You are on the cutting edges and I congratulate you. In the second section, I talked about the technology behind chat GPT. It's not a person, it's a machine. It's a machine that has a, happened to read a big chunk of the internet and it talks to you. It generates sentences and paragraphs, but it's a machine, it's not a person. A machine cannot lie. It can get things wrong, but it doesn't, a person lies, a machine doesn't lie, a machine just gets it wrong. Think of this machine as a friend who knows a lot and is always available, always patient, always willing to talk to you. We talked about 100 ways that GPT can help a teacher. In the third section, I encouraged you as teachers to encourage your students to use that GPT as much as possible. It's like when you do that, when you encourage your students to use chat GPT as much as possible, what you are saying is you have thrown yourself and now you have given one of you, each of your students to be with them all the time. How wonderful a gift is that? It's a wonderful gift to give. So encourage your students to use chat GPT as much as possible. You cannot go with your students into their homes, into every home at once, but you can send chat GPT to be there on your behalf. The first step for most people is to play with it a little, right? And that's fine. You know, that playfulness is wonderful, but a lot of people don't take that next step. Right, you play with it and then you take the next step, which is then you very consciously integrate it into all that you do. That is a higher level skill. This is the new literacy. Like integrating chat GPT in everything you do is a new definition of being a literate person. Chat GPT is the newest word processor. Right? They are word processor, Google Docs, Microsoft Word. Before word processors, we had typewriters and I have used them. I have used typewriters. When you mess up one letter, when you're using a typewriter, you have to get rid of the entire page. You have to press it. And that machine makes a lot of noise. Clickety click. In the fourth section, we talked about 
100 specific prompts teachers can start using right away. Right, you have that list. You have it in writing. My blog post has been shared with you, right? It is ready to go. And you will have that list in English as well as Russian, right? I prepared the Russian version. How do I do that? I used ChatGPT. I said, hey, give this list to me in Russian. And it did. Yes, ChatGPT can be used in Russian, very much so. In the fifth section, we talked about longer prompts and follow-up prompts. And this right now is the sixth and final section. And this is short deliberately because I'm in a hurry to move on to my, my favorite part of this webinar, which is getting questions from you, the question and succession. I can't wait to hear what questions you might have. And by the way, my first name, Paramendra, is also my handle on Twitter. You can ask me questions on Twitter anytime. Now, today, later, tomorrow, future, next week, next month, anytime. So you can ask me questions on Twitter anytime you want. My Twitter handle was displayed at the bottom of each slide you saw. And I'll try my best to answer. There are also many Facebook and LinkedIn and Reddit groups on this topic of chat GPT where people ask and answer all sorts of chat GPT questions. So please feel free to reach out to me and to many others like me. We are all in this together. Chat GPT and the family of fast emerging AI applications will take us to an age of abundance in the very near future, a time when everyone everywhere on earth will have plenty. That's the promise. That is what this is about. And this age of abundance was promised in the scriptures thousands of years ago. And with that, Daria and team, let's please open the floor and let's have the respected teachers in the audience ask their questions. If I had my way, I would just sit and listen to as many questions as possible from these 30, 40 minutes. But I think Daria has required me to answer them and so shall it be. So with that, let's move on to the questions. Or I can't hear you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Parmenda, for your inspiring presentation. Thank you for your enthusiasm and thank you for your inspiration that you use to promote ChatGPT for all educators all over the world, not only at our webinar. Thank you for your point of view that when you say that uh, please use ChatGPT and this abundance. Yeah, thank you so much. We also agree with it. Yes, we do have some questions in chat. We do have them. Let me please gather uh, them. And I uh, just to remind you that this is a practical part uh, for you. So please don't be shy. Uh, don't be shy to ask questions. We had some comments in ChatGPT. For example, I uh, started to use ChatGPT from scratch and I still haven't understood how I can use it in my work as a teacher. Maybe when I look at your 100 prompts, I will get this understanding. So yeah, uh, let's uh, try to answer this question. So where you just know nothing about ChatGPT, you are a teacher, where to start from? If that is where you are at. If that is where you are at, where you are like, okay, I'm completely new. I'm a teacher. I'm curious about this. What is this thing? How do I use it as a teacher? That curiosity itself is that form to use, right? The question is, how can I, as a teacher, use chat GPT? Well, write that into chat GPT and hit enter and you will have your answer. Does that answer your question? Like, you take that question to chat GPT. I, I would start reading, reading from that list of 100, but I will save you time by saying, you know, 
ask that question to chat GPT and look at my blog post where I did ask that question and I got 100 in-depth ways, you know, it goes into all aspects of teaching, you know, curriculum development, plan development, how to handle students, how to, you know, use students who have differing abilities, like students move at different paces, how do I handle that? Should I worry that students might use chat GPT to cheat and write essays that they should be writing? Now they are generating it from the chat. Should I worry about that, right? All these questions can be asked, right? So I think, you know, for somebody like you, you know, like the starting prompt would be, you know, that simple prompt. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. It's a really the reality right now. My personal uh, point of view, maybe you will also uh, confirm my point of view. I think that ChatGPT can be considered as a personal coach. Uh, don't you agree that sometimes you have some material, you have some task, for example, to organize some event and you just, you know, advise with him uh, which idea is better. So I'd like to um, I'd like to tell our colleagues that we started uh, to use ChatGPT when we tried to create this course. We just asked it, uh, how do you think uh, should educators use ChatGPT and ChatGPT just gave us the whole list of arguments and points why we should do this course. So yeah, I think we can say that uh, this course can be um, contributed by ChatGPT. So when you created your own course, maybe you had the same experience. What do you think? Yes. One thing you mentioned is like, let me take an example, like sometimes teachers, like when they prepare a lesson, the lesson program, the lesson outline, they get feedback from other teachers like saying, hey, this is the you know, lesson outline I prepared, what do you think? And that teacher friend of yours gives you feedback. But what if you are home and that teacher friend is not around? You know, what do you do? Well, Chad GPT can do that for you, what your teacher friends used to do, but you know, they might not have the time or you know, they're not around. I mean, they're not, be, it's 11 p.m., you are home, what do you want to do? Who are you going to get feedback from? Well, Chad GPT can give you feedback, like for things that you have prepared, saying, hey, this is what I prepared. Can you give me some feedback? Or, you know, what do you think are the strengths and weaknesses? So, yes, it can be a great tutor, a teacher to fill in the gaps. And everybody, I have gaps in my knowledge. I do a lot of marketing and I find gaps in my knowledge all the time. Right. So, as a teacher, you know, like we have our strengths and we have our weaknesses and, and that is true for all teachers, right? So chat GPT helps you find like where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and then it helps you fill those gaps. So yes, it can be a great tutor to teachers. Like sometimes teachers go for training and retraining, right? Uh, the best education departments, they do that all the time. Like once a year or once every few years, they send teachers to the training camps. Well. Chat GPT is that for you now 24 7. All you have to do is use it. And it can be a virtual assistant. Like somebody, like maybe you can't afford to have an intern, paid or unpaid. Well, Chat GPT is your intern who is helping you, you know, with little tasks. So, yes, yes, it can be a tutor. Teachers. Yeah, we have a comment in a chat from the participants. Yes, our participants agree with you. And they say that more often, uh, my, uh, more often, ChatGPT is used as personal therapist or mentor that can be, um, that can direct me to this or that area. Right. When we use it, we understand that sometimes in our life we have these types of questions that can be, you know, we can be embarrassed to ask maybe. So in this case, ChatGPT can be used. Uh, yeah. Thank you for this comment in the chat. You mentioned uh, therapist. Uh, that is very insightful. You know, like it is true. Like ChatGPT can be used as a therapist. Like sometimes you are, when you're not feeling, you know, your best, you're down and out and, you know, like that GPT can be that therapist that helps you through that bad mood. That is a very, you know, like high level thing to do. Yes, it can be done. It can be a therapist. Uh, 
It can be your, you know, like somebody gives you feedback. Sure, yes. Окей, так, такой вот вопрос, вопрос сомнений, и он действительно сегодня есть не только у наших участников, а во we also have the following question. Sometimes we don't really trust ChatGPT. So the following question is. What what do you think? Uh, can it be so that ChatGPT will lead to the situation where students will just stop thinking because everything will be done by ChatGPT instead of them? They will be lazy. They will not learn anymore. That is an excellent question. And I have been visiting, you know, Facebook groups where teachers gather and they express their opinions and this concern that you shared is the top shared concern among teachers in the various online groups that I've visited. So that is an excellent question. Let me handle that. I think the proof is the opposite of your anxiety. Like chat GPT is a tool that will help students think harder and deeper on many topics. That is the truth. Uh, does chat GPT get it wrong? Yes. Like you have to assume it gets it very wrong one out of 10 times. You have to assume that. So if you just like ask chat GPT questions and take everything as the gospel truth, you'll be in trouble because sometimes it gets answers that are like very wrong. And you, you should have the ability to just that. You have to be have the ability to say okay that is wrong you know what you said is wrong so absolutely true that it gets it wrong roughly one out of ten times roughly so every ten questions you ask one of them it might get it wrong right you have to assume that otherwise you could land yourself in trouble on the career path right so have to assume that it gets it wrong every once in a while As for the yeah, you know, students getting lazy, you know, that that probably is the gist of what I'm I've been trying to say in this entire webinar is many people think teachers, parents think, oh, now with Chat GPT, my kids will just generate essays with Chat GPT and they'll stop writing this and that, and you know, this is bad, you know, uh, it now bye bye education, like you know, so there's all this anxiety, whereas the proof. You know, the re the real truth about chat GPT is it's just the opposite. It is an excellent tool for education for both teachers and students. It's like when the calculators first came along, right? People are like, oh no, no, now now people will stop doing math and they'll become dumb. They will not do how to you know do multiplications and divisions. Like this is a bad thing. But slowly we learn to integrate it, right? We are like we encourage the students to use the calculators because when they use calculators, now they can think about higher level problems and higher level stuff, right? I think that calculator is a good example of that, where we first feared the technology and now we don't even think about it, right? So your challenge as a teacher is, well, how do I integrate it so that those anxieties don't come to be And instead, the opposite becomes true. Now my students are working harder than ever. They are asking questions about things they never asked questions about. And now even my average students have become A students. That's the promise. Like you're in an average class 10 years ago, most students were C students. And now, thanks to Chad GPT, all those C students can become A students. That's the promise. Yeah, next, please. Yeah, that's that's a good news. That's a good news. Uh, yes, um, today, nowadays, this studenthood uh, has accepted this idea of using ChatGPT, and we have discussed uh, many times uh, in previous sessions that nowadays we should change our 
tasks uh, because usually teachers give very easy tasks that can be very easy solved by ChatGPT. But for us to assess people better, uh, students better, we have to uh, give them tasks that won't be so easily uh, given uh, answers by ChatGPT. Yes, thank you for your answer. Very interesting question, I think. One second. Uh, this question will be about the usage of chat GPT uh, in uh, s some uh, narrow specializations. I will give you an example just from my life. Uh, today in the morning, I had a meeting with a um, speech specialist, uh, one of the speakers of our course, and uh, we asked her, how do you think ChatGPT could be used in uh, treating children with dyslexia or dysgraphy? And um, this uh, expert told me that yes, ChatGPT was given 100% great answers. And even in this super narrow topic, for example, uh, ChatGPT created an individual learning path for a child with dyslexia and uh, individual learning lesson plan with uh, for children with uh, dysgraphy. So what is your opinion of uh, how ChatGPT can be used in a very narrow uh, specializations? You gave an excellent excellent use case for chat GPT, right? For those very specific scenario, right? We mentioned dyslexia, right? Like all of us, we are on a spectrum, right? Some of the people who have traditionally been labeled as you know, like, sorry to use this word, but like say retarded, right? Some, oh, such and such person is retarded. Most of those so-called retarded people, they might have problems maybe speaking, but end up, ends up that they are very smart in some ways, maybe at visualizing things or at calculations. Did you know that the richest person on earth today, Elon Musk, you know, the founder of Tesla and SpaceX, he could have been labeled as one of those people, somebody who is not normal. You didn't know that? But this guy, you know, he is the richest person on earth. He is doing amazing work, sending rockets into space. So traditional education, right? Industrial era education is like, it has this median, idea of who a human being is. And he tries to put everybody into that median, but nobody's on the median. We are all, you, me, everybody, we are on a spectrum. Some people are on the, this end of the spectrum. Some people are closer to the center. Some people are that end of the spectrum. We are just different. The so-called, you know, retarded people are just different. They are smart in other ways. Have you met people who are great at poetry, but they are not so good at math or they do math, but they do it very slowly. Some of the most original mathematicians have been slow. But when we look at a kid who is doing math slowly, we're like, oh, maybe he's not that smart. No, maybe he's the next Nobel Prize winner or CE, right? But that we didn't have the capacity to figure that out. Now we do. With chat GPT, and when I say chat GPT, I mean, the, I mean, you must have heard of mid journey or stable diffusion where you do all sorts of artwork, right? One artwork I did was I said, I'm from Nepal. I said, Mount Everest, but taller. And it gave me an artwork that was Mount Everest, but taller. I would have never thought about painting that, right? So we are all differently labeled, right? Some people are very good at, some people are exceptional cooks, right? They're very good at cooking, but maybe they're not so good at math. What does that make them? I know some chefs who are successful entrepreneurs who make more money than doctors, right? But they, they didn't do good at high school. Does that make them smart? Yes, in their own way. Like everybody is smart in their own way. But before, you know, like a few decades before we didn't have the tools, now we have the tools. That's the good news, right? So it is, ChatGPT is very good for 
respecting the fact that everybody is smart in their own way and they learn at their own pace. So that use case is excellent. Yes, it gives you very like niche, sub niche knowledge because it read the whole internet. It has read many of the books on the internet, right? So it's a machine, it's not a person, right? So it's a machine that is basically the internet being presented to you in a new way. So yeah, excellent use case, thank you. Next, please. Next question, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, very practical question. Is it possible to, uh, how is possible to create a prompt for ChatGPT to describe a diagram or a table? So if we have a table, we need ChatGPT to describe it. What prompt would you use? That uh, ChatGPT is mostly used for text, but with diagrams and prompts, I mean, I have generated tables, but specific diagrams, I personally have not used that, you know, like, so I'm not the best person to answer that question, but if not chat GPT, then there are other tools that might do that. You know, uh, since I don't personally have used that particular use case, I might have to pass this question. I might not be the best per person to answer that, sorry. Yes, that's true. Uh, as for now, ChatGPT do not accept uh, tables and diagrams. It's not possible to send him. But I think if we send a link to him, to a diagram, it will be possible. Let's just try. Try, as our speaker said, try. Don't be shy. Try to work with ChatGPT and maybe you will work it out. Yes. Um, Okay, again, try. Thank you for your question in the chat. I think you will have an interesting prompt. The following question. Yes. We all know that uh, we have two versions of ChatGPT available right now, three and a half, which is free of charge, and uh, ChatGPT 4. So you personally, what version do you use? I use the free version. Free version is excellent. It's 3.5. There are a lot of people who think the free version is better than the four, uh, GPT-4. Although, you know, like, I mean, I'm not arguing against it. You know, chat GPT-4 is more powerful, but for all the work that I do, the free version works just fine. So, you know, like, you shouldn't feel like if I'm using the free version, I'm getting lesser. No, it is excellent. Uh, GPT 3.5, which is the free version, it is excellent. And uh, know that uh, Bing, right, the Microsoft search engine Bing, which is free, does use the GPT 4. So if you want the free, like, you know, GPT 4, that is, you know, paid version of chat GPT, if you want that same thing for free, just go to Bing, bing.com, the, the Microsoft search engine. And by the way, Google's Bard also has become pretty good. So you have chat GPT, you have Bing and you have Bard. Use all three or any which you like. It's all free. Even the GPT-4 is free. You go to Bing, it's free. It's the same GPT-4. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have... Um... We have the like question. The following is, uh, I think that the writing an essay with ChatGPT is a great idea, but how an educator can assess such an essay? Can you please repeat that question for me? How can an educator assess what? How an educator can assess an essay that was written by ChatGPT? How about this? <laughs> How about that asking your student, like, did you write it yourself or did you use chat GPT? That's one way. Another is, I don't know, like, in what format you receive the essay. Is it in print or if it is uh, digital, you can just copy and paste and ask for feedback on that essay, you know, like. Uh, but this is like the top concern of teachers that I see in the groups that I visit online. You know, they're like, oh, now my students are going to just generate the essays. Uh, using chat GPT and they're not doing any of the work and you know it's 
teachers are anxious about that. A better way would be like be proactive about it, where you ask your students saying, hey, I want you to use chat GPT when you, you write your essay, but here's the correct way to do it. Like step one, you know, there you have a topic and then write the key points yourself, then enter the key points and generate the first draft. Now take that first draft to five different drafts and each, with each draft, get some feedback, right? So use it, but personalize it, make it your own. Like after each draft you generate, you know, like modify it and, you know, add richness to it. That's something that chap, the machine cannot do. The human beings beats the machine. So there's a way where like you encourage students to use chat GPT, even in writing essays, but do it the correct way. Like take it to multiple graphs, you know, use your brain, uh, all that stuff. So I use that all the time. I write essays, I write blog wow. posts all the time. Spicy make them think, make them think, you know, like they should think harder now because you know, the writing part is, has become easier. They should think harder. They should tackle bigger topics, you know, more complex questions. Make them think harder. Make them stand in class and ask like, okay, I read your essay now. Tell me something about this thing you have written. Спасибо большое. Вот такой вопрос. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, right now in our chat, we um, we start our each morning with a situation and we give this situation to our uh, participants and let them give their prompts uh, options. So I was asked to give you this uh, situation and ask your opinion. Which prompt would you give for our situation? What do you think? What one so the situation our... is following. Okay, sorry, okay. Give. So give an inclusive methods and approaches to help students with uh, humanity uh, studies to develop their creativity and learning motivation and critical thinking. Give links to websites and give at least five options. So that was our prompt. Well, what uh, what prompt would you uh, give in this situation? Okay, since you asked, like you want some websites to visit as part of answer, I would recommend using Bing because chat GPT doesn't do that. Chat GPT will tell you doesn't have access to internet, right? <laughs> uh, so, but Bing does that, Bing and even Bar, Google's Bar does that. So this particular task, you'd want to take to either Microsoft search in Bing, the new Bing, bing.com slash new or bard.google.com. And the same question you asked me, like, you know, like what you said is itself the prompt, right? What you asked me is the prompt. You put that into the box, hit enter, and you get it. it. It really is supposed to be that easy, right? Your question that comes in your mind is the prompt. So, uh, yeah, that's the answer. But the only okay. thing I would modify okay. is like, Okay, we've worked today with ChatGPT and we uh, formulated uh, some prompts uh, with a uh, role, with uh, instruction, with uh, requirements. And uh, in general, uh, ChatGPT gave us a great answers. And uh, we also used uh, ChatGPT 4. And in this version, uh, it provided us with um, links. So I think that's the difference. Okay, the next question we have. Maybe you know uh, the answer to the following. What data center is ChatGPT based on? Where does he get information for its answers? It, like ChatGPT, it was programmed to read a big chunk of the internet. And so 
if you're asking like where is the physical location of the data center for this company open ai that i don't know but does that even matter uh google i know has data centers all over the world many in the us but many also in different parts of the world chat gpt doesn't need the same level of uh, infrastructure like its programs are designed to like uh, it's still you know like has read a big chunk of the internet like wikipedia and you know reddit groups and anything and everything in between not all of it but a big chunk of it so i'm curious as to why you want to know like where the data center is like does it matter if it is in the us or i don't know russia or china or india i mean i would guess like it's a small startup it probably is in california you know like because that's where they are best out out of but what difference does that make Ну, на самом деле все знают, где находится, да, и у нас в курсе в первом модуле мы uh, потом... Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, we know uh, where uh, ChatGPT is relocated. Uh, in our course, uh, we uh, also mentioned uh, this information. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you. I think we will move to the next question. We are interested in your point of view. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, in the future, uh, will it be legal to refer to ChatGPT in scientific purpose? So right now, it's a very hard question when you write a research paper or thesis and you can't mention ChatGPT as a source where you use the information. So uh, again, maybe this question is not uh, for you, maybe for our researchers and experts that we will have no, later well, in the session. Yeah, but just let me uh, know in the future, do you think it will be legal to refer to ChatGPT in scientific papers and research you can ask me you can ask me this is this is a great interest to me so answer is not only will it, will it be legal it will be required it will be a requirement like can you imagine today doing a work without a laptop or a mobile phone like i mean there's no law saying you must use the mobile phone you must use a laptop but it is like it is such a part of what we do that you know we don't even think about it like chat dpt will be so integrated like in fact, that is the better use case of chat GPT. The chat GPT that you and I use, you know, ordinary people, a chat GPT that has trained on the whole internet is not that accurate. What they are trying to build is something very specific. Imagine a, a version of chat GPT that is only trained on medical journal articles, like all correct information, verified information, and nothing else. Now, that version of chat GPT, right? that is trained on only on scientific journal articles. Will that be very authoritative? Yes, it will be much better. A great example, and it has already happened. Like, you know how scientists go about creating new proteins? Well, those compounds, those, I'm sorry, those proteins are hard to do at a human level, but you can chat deeply to do it, and it creates all sorts of proteins that scientists were not even able to imagine. So this is great news for researchers. It will not only be legal, it will be required. So you must do it. Like how, will you, how else will you do the work? Like we use software to do all sorts of data crunching, right? That doesn't make us any less original. We are still very original, but we are using, you know, softwares for data crunching. This is the same thing, only like more intense, more powerful in a higher level stuff. So. I think not only it will be legal, it will be required. You know, your profession will require you for researchers to use it, you know, like very much so. Although I think it will not be the chat GPT that you and I use, it will be more like a specialized version that I've been trained on, you know, legitimate, recognized literature, like very specific, just in journal articles in your field, like, right? so whatever your field is, say if you're a chemist and all the chemistry journals in, you know, of the past few decades or wherever in the world, they are used to train a version of chat GPT. That would be an excellent research assistant. Like it will be like, a, we can't imagine doing your work without it. So yeah, that's my summary that this is of great interest to me. Like the world's biggest problem. Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Спасибо огромное. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your point of view. So we have uh, quite a few questions. Uh, I just try to summarize uh, them. Uh, the following question is, how, uh, chat, how can ChatGPT be used in the clinical practice of a uh, gynecologist, including teaching activities? I think our participant is in, from some, uh, I don't know, University of Medicine. Yeah, so he is asking how can ChatGPT be used in some clinical purposes to teach uh, future like gynecologists or like uh, any kind of doctors? That's interesting. So on the same blog that I have shared, there's one blog post called 100 ways that GPT can help a doctor. And there's a few other similar to that thing. 100 ways that GPT can help a nurse or 100 ways that GPT can help a surgeon or 100 ways that GPT can help a pharmacist. So instead of pharmacist or surgeon or doctor, you could say, 100 ways that GPT can help a gynecologist, right? And this question ties to the earlier question. So when a doctor, right, and there is no substitute for doctors, right? Just a few weeks ago, uh, I had to take my sister to a clinic nearby, near where I live, and then I met a doctor, and then, you know, you're not talking, and then he ended up knowing that I have this online course called Chat GPT, and he was anxious about himself. He's like, oh, so, Chat GPT can uh, do diagnosis, all that stuff. And I said, look, I cannot do what you do. You're a doctor, I'm not. I cannot do what you do. You are still very much needed, but now your productivity can go up. You can do your work better. And one data that people cite in this country is all those deaths due to errors, right? Some kind of medical error and people die. In the US, that is like, I don't know, close to 100,000 people every year, right? So many of those, not all, but many of those deaths can be prevented when you use something like chat GPT in the diagnosis process. So yeah, you make your best guess, right? You say, okay, these are the symptoms. What is it? What's going on? So you do use your brain, but you also use something like chat GPT to say, okay, what do you think? What's going on? And then you match with what you were thinking and that will reduce the errors. At least that is the current thinking. So for a gynecologist, very much so, you can use this tool. Like the more specialized the field of knowledge, the better help chat GPT seems to give. So when you say gynecologist, that's a very specific, you know, field of knowledge, chat GPT is excellent with that. That and any other specific, you know, like very well described niche. Yeah, so I highly encourage you to use it for a gynecologist or any other, you know, medical professional with a specialized training. Thank you. Next. Спасибо. Я напоминаю нашим участникам, что предыдущая наша веб-сессия. Yes, thank you so much. And I would like to remind you uh, that uh, on May 27, uh, we had an online session on how ChatGPT uh, and in general AI can be used and integrated uh, in education in healthcare. So if you don't know how to use ChatGPT in your activity, just ask it. Yeah, that's a great advice. Uh, thank you so much. We again have a lot of skeptics and uh, many uh, distrust uh, to ChatGPT. They say, for example, that uh, ChatGPT can generate the list of sources. They can uh, just come up with uh, books that actually don't exist. Uh, that is true, that is true. <laughs> so ChatGPT somehow thought that uh, he is capable of doing that. He just creates books. It just creates uh, authors. So that this is, is something I recommend you to check. So, uh, no. yeah. yes, so yes, the yes, question that's true. is, no. Sorry. so if ChatGPT uh, takes information from internet, from Wikipedia, for example, all these websites uh, has unverified data. 
or how do you think ChatGPT somehow checks it? For example, let's take uh, Wikipedia. Any person can create any page uh, in Wikipedia, and then we just ask uh, ChatGPT, and it will take this information from this newly, freshly created Wikipedia page that has some nonsense. So how do you think uh, ChatGPT checks his answers or not? That is very correct. Like, you know, like there have been people, they're like, okay, I'm writing a scientific paper on this topic. Give me a list of references, right? And chat GPT generates journal articles, you know, like journals, this and that. And many of them don't exist. It's like fiction. Does that mean chat GPT is lying? No, a machine doesn't lie. A machine just produces words. So that's not lying. It's just that. And Chat GPT just doesn't go and copy and paste. It is generating text. It is like one word at a time. It is generating text saying, okay, what is the most likely next word? It is guessing, right? And so sometimes it gets it very wrong. It makes things up. It hallucinates. That is why you have to watch out. Like everything in producer, before you use it, you have to read it. You have to make sure it is correct, right? And yes, you have to find those mistakes where like it gets it very wrong. You know, if you were to just blindly like copy and paste everything, you will be in deep trouble no matter what your career is. You don't want to do that. Like you want to verify, you want to check, uh, and you want to like have enough knowledge that you can say, okay, that's wrong. For example, if it generated a list of journal articles for your reference, right? Well, you can then Google it saying, okay, this journal article, you know, like when you, go, when you Google it, what happens? If it doesn't exist, well, you delete that. You don't use that, right? So you always have to verify, you know, you always have to verify. Assume like one out of 10 times, at least one out of 10 times, it is very wrong. You have to assume that. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. It, uh, it says uh, that ChatGPT and its mistakes confirms uh, that our expertise is much more important uh, and we should develop our critical thinking. Thank you uh, so much. We should understand that we will never uh, have to uh, trust ChatGPT 100%. And if you ever try ChatGPT, you should know that ChatGPT uh, says, please check my answers. Uh, something I give can be not true. So it even warns us to check uh, the answers. Yeah. Uh, I've already faced the situations when, yeah, I actually had this prompt, give me the source of literature, and I had the books that really don't exist. But yes, we agree with you <laughs> that when we start from the scratch, when we don't know where to start from, for example, uh, now I know it's June. Uh, I mean, in a few days, it's June, and every educators will face the issue to develop new lesson plans, new methods, new techniques for the new uh, educational year, new academic year. And I remember when I was working as a teacher, I know how much time it took me, uh, weeks, months. And right now, with the use of ChatGPT, I can do it like for two hours, right? And even now... Um, yeah, and even now, ChatGPT can use different formats to provide me information with. So I think, uh, dear Pramenda, you can agree with me that we motivate our educators not to search for uh, disadvantages, but we have to look for advantages, benefits, how it can help us and how we can integrate it in our work life. And only in this case, this will be the tool that can be integrated in our educational process. Uh, definitely, yes. Uh, again, thank you so much, Parameter. We really indeed had a practical uh, webinar. I think you inspired many of the educators that will, after we finish, they will just uh, type in a chat GPT, how can I use you? So we hope that they will find the questions to the answers. And uh, finally, would you give just a few sentences for our participants of how they can motivate, just try to motivate our educators with your own opinion? Asiana, I just heard you say that you have used chat GPT to create lesson programs, all that stuff. And that is a high level use case, you know, like I should have been the moderator and you should have been the speaker at this webinar because you are already an expert. If you can do that with chat GPT, 
that's it. You know, that is, you are using it at an expert level. So you right there, you are the resource, you know, like I should have been a moderator and you should have been the speaker at this webinar. Anyways, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. You know, this has been a wonderful experience for me. And I'm on Twitter. My first name is my Twitter handle. You can ask me questions anytime. Now, today, later, next week, next month, anytime. You know how Twitter works. It's 24 seven, right? So that is always there. We know this is, we live in an online world. And yeah, it's, it's been an honor. You know, it, it really is simple. You know, it's don't make it complicated. Like when you have questions, just ask. Ask chat GPT, that's, that's all it takes. Like creating prompts, like even chat GPT helps to create prompts. Like all the best prompts I have used for image generation, right? I was struggling with it. I would create prompts and it not create great, best images, right? So I used chat GPT come up with prompts that I can use for image generation, and then it started working for me, right? So chat GPT can help you create those very prompts that you are asking for. Saying, hey, based on this point, what prompt can I use? Can you create that prompt? And chat GPT will create that prompt for you. And then you use that prompt to go back to chat GPT and ask a question again. So it's wonderful. And right there, you know, like I'm talking to a moderator who is the real expert, because somebody who can use chat GPT to create lesson plans, he's using it in, in an expert way right there. That's an excellent example right there. So many aspects of teaching, all aspects of teaching, it can help you. And that list of you know 100 prompts, it has that different I think that you do as a teacher. So all the best, you know, you guys are great people, you know, doing honorable work, teaching is honorable work. Like I said, you know, I still stay in touch with my high school teachers. Like on a weekly basis, I have a group for them. And I, you know, share things even today. So yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a, an honor. It's been an enjoyable experience. And I look forward to keeping the conversation going. And you mentioned something on May 27th. You mean June 27th, right? Because you mentioned some event that's on May 27th, but that already Спасибо. happened three days ago. Спасибо огромное, Парамедра. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Parameda, for having time to meet with our educators and share your experience.